What? Are you late again? I'm telling you. How many times do I have to tell you people you gotta be on time? That's very, to be successful, you need to make sure you're on time for things like nutrition. Anyway, so today we're going to talk about protein energy malnutrition. Uh, not too much in this um, lesson, but it's important stuff. Uh, this first frame just kind of shows you, um, you know, in the red where most of the protein energy malnutrition is going to be. Uh, and basically, protein energy malnutrition is just what it says. It's either a protein deficiency or bro both a protein and an energy deficiency, uh, mainly caused because of lack of uh, food intake. And so you can see where the red is is going to be the most um, most problems with uh, PEM. But first, before we do that, I thought I would show you something that, um, you know, I wish I would have had in a car that I could purchase uh, when my daughter was uh, growing up and uh, being uh, ex escorted out by young fellas. So let me show it to you. And I think some of you who have daughters uh, will agree with me that this would be a good feature to have. You get it going here. Here we are. I still can't believe my dad let us even touch his new car. Yeah. I think it came with the car. <laughs> hey. Wait. The Trunk Monkey Chaperone version. An innovative idea you'll only find at Suburban Auto Group. Now, you cannot argue with me that that would be a good feature. Uh, some of you young ladies might not agree, but as a father, I think I would have appreciated having something like that. So, anyway. Okay. Let's just talk a little bit about protein energy malnutrition. Quashiorcor. Uh, Quashiorcor, as it, as it says, is basically just low protein. Um, and not really a lack of calories. Um, so you get plenty of calories, you get, uh, but you just don't have enough protein in there. So it'd be a lot of carbohydrate type of foods um, that you could find, but just not high protein. And some of the symptoms is, uh, for example, you can't tell it on these pictures here, but basically um, if you have black hair, it would turn kind of a reddish tinge because you wouldn't have the the pigmentation uh, or the melanin that was going to, is going to be deposited in your hair and so it would be kind of a reddish color. Uh, I'll explain what we mean by belly bulge and why you would have belly bulge. Usually, you know, here you can see the belly bulge, but it's not real evident in these pictures, but the joints can also be um, have edema and be a little bit swollen, fatty liver, and as you can imagine, a pretty uh, apathetic and listless kind of thing. Um, but let me just show you the idea of uh, edema. So this is basically would be because you're not getting a lot of protein in your food. Your blood proteins would be very low and your body proteins would be higher. Those of you that have gone through uh, BI-112, we talked about osmosis and hypertonic and isotonic and all that kind of stuff. Well, as you know, you know, this would have a lot more water. Okay, so this would be um, uh, higher water concentration would be hypotonic to this solution here, uh, which is in the body cells. So as you remember from osmosis, water moves from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Therefore, you know, part of the belly bulge is going to be because of edema and the swelling in the joints because water is going to move from the blood into the body tissues. Uh, because there's more protein there. So that's a pretty simple explanation there. Uh, we haven't got to this part yet. We'll get to it more when we talk about the uh, lipoproteins. Um, but um, basically saying that, you know, it's going to be a lack of protein. So you see this start. This structure is uh, an identification marker basically on the lipoprotein. 
And the VLDLs are ones that are uh, made by the liver. And so they are meant to get rid of fat from the liver. So when you eat too many carbohydrates, you eat too much protein, uh, and you eat fat, basically it's going to go to the liver and then the liver is going to change the carbs and, li and protein into lipids and then to get rid of it, it has to package it into a transport vehicle because you can't just put lipids into the blood because the blood is liquid and you know, mostly water so it would float. So you have to put it into a vehicle and that vehicle then is going to transport around your, your body. The problem is, if you don't have a protein there, you can't make a VLDL. Therefore, you can't make the VLDLs, you can't get fat out of the liver, and then your liver, you get a fatty liver. Okay, uh, This is also pretty evident. Um, <clears throat> as you know, you can get uh, alcohol can supply calories, 7 calories per gram. So it's not uncommon for uh, people who drink a lot of alcohol, spend their money on alcohol, but don't spend it on food, uh, would be uh, getting some symptoms of kwashiorkor because they would um, um, uh, get you know enough calories through the alcohol, but then they wouldn't get the protein to do that. So they would have basically get a fatty liver, they could have a belly bulge, they could have you know, probably graying of hair, you know, that kind of thing. So not uncommon on uh, on the streets uh, where they don't get a lot of food. Um, used to be a lot downtown, like on Burnside around in there in Portland. But now that they have uh, like bologna joes or you know those things where they can get food, it's not so common anymore. But it is it is a problem if people just drink and just don't eat. It can be a problem. Protein energy malnutrition is as marasmus. Uh, basically, this is starvation. Uh, it's uh, when somebody is starving to death, low protein and calories, skin and bones, retarded brain growth. And both these conditions, Kwashiorkor and Marasmus, um, retarded brain growth is a, is a big problem because uh, brain development occurs until you're about two years old. After that, there's no catch up. So if you uh, don't get enough food, enough energy and proteins, then you can impair uh, mental abilities for the rest of your life. Uh, this would also, marasmus, they don't call it this here, they call it protein energy malnutrition, but marasmus you can see with cancer patients, you can see with uh, people who don't eat well, um, that are in hospitals or nursing homes, that kind of thing, they would get marasmus, basically again it's just skin and bones, um, but um, anyway. Uh, phenylketonuria is basically a lack of an enzyme that's going to uh, convert uh, phenylalanine, which is an amino acid, into tyrosine, which is another amino acid. Um, and so it doesn't do that conversion, therefore you get an excess of phenylketonuria uh, and you uh, get a toxic uh, concentration which can, which can cause mental retardation. Uh, and then, uh, so they will do a check in the hospital for a PKU for most newborns to see if they have PKU because if they do then uh, as you can see at the bottom tyrosine which is really a non-essential amino acid becomes essential so if they um, do formulas uh, they have to be careful because if you have milk form milk based formulas it has too much uh, phenylalanine uh, and so you have to basically feed it um, feed um, a formula uh, that has just enough phenylalanine to take care of need and then tyrosine as an addition because it becomes essential. Um, you'd have to feed them a formula because um, mother's milk uh, during nursing would have too much phenylalanine in it. So these would be individuals that again would have to have special diets with watching phenylalanine and tyrosine levels uh, and then they'd have to watch their diet the rest of their life. So you know, when you have a baby, they probably do a check, a PKU check, just to make sure because they want to make sure they're feeding them the right thing. In case they do have PKU, they would have to really uh, monitor their intake of phenylalanine and tyrosine. And so this just kind of gives you the idea that if you do have the phenylalanine hydroxylase, you can convert phenylalanine to tyrosine. If you don't have it, then you don't have adequate tyrosine, but you can have a buildup of phenylalanine, which can cause some real problems. There is such a problem of, of protein excess, 
So obviously this uh, dog had too much protein. But anyway, um, protein excess is would be considered a malnutrition. We talked about malnutrition earlier where an excess is just sometimes as, as problematic as uh, deficiency. So uh, here basically is the rule of thumb for getting too much protein. Uh, the normal protein is 0.8 grams per kilogram ideal body weight or about 56 grams so here's uh, you know you get over that amount you get a protein overload excess water loss again uh, because you are going to a um, couple things uh, you're going to be uh, breaking down the amino acids taking off the nitrogen uh, and getting rid of it uh, but when you get that hypertonic uh, solution of, uh, of basically urea, you know, nitri when you break off nitrogen from amino acids, it becomes ammonia and then urea. When you get that excess urea, you're going to have excess water coming in because that becomes a hypertonic solution in your blood. And so you're going to lose a lot, of, a lot of water that way. But also the excess um, urea is going to cause an increased renal mass, which can put a burden on the kidneys and can actually burn them out. And then you can have a risk of osteoporosis because excess protein can increase the amount of calcium that is um, excreted. So anyway, um, but you know most times this is not a problem. Protein excess isn't a problem unless you take supplements. Um, I've just got a bottle here of supplement where you can see that you know one scoop, which is not very much, 30, 30 grams is is not a heck of a lot. Um, about an ounce is pretty much is 24 grams uh, of protein. Uh, and so if we go back and we say you know 150 grams is what you need. Um, you know, weightlifters and thing. You know, people like that. One scoop is just not going to do it. You know, they're going to take more. So this is when you have some issues with protein excess. Okay. So this kind of ends our section on protein mal energy malnutrition. Um, so um, that's about it. Not too much to it. So we'll talk to you later.